Alright guys, so um, I see the volume's going through now. Sorry about that. When I switch a shot to go to lower that banner, uh, we lost the volume. So anyway, we'll just pick up where we left off. I'll they, have had, to, they didn't hear us. Yeah, they heard that with the banner all the way up to the banner part. Which was like two seconds in. Well, let's pick up where we left off. <laughs> Which was... Hey guys, welcome to the Black no. Lives Show. <laughs> We had already done that. <laughs> All right. So here, I think where we left off was the fact that Trisha's computer crashed. Some of you guys might know. And also the simple fact that uh, tonight's show is going to be more about the 3D, the Flatbot, uh, 3D printing, and how we go about using the tool chain of 3D printing, you know, the the um, kind of the, our workflow. There's, a, there's so many different ways to do it now. Um, but this is the way that we found that we really like. And... Um, you know, feel free to explore, but uh, I'll go through and just show you from SketchUp to 3D Part how we go about doing it. It's really cool. Awesome. So about the computer crashing, if I could just interject for a moment. Um, we can't stop it. We, <laughs> so at the moment, um, we, we've lost pretty much all of our data um, to a degree. I mean, we still have our designs, but addresses, phone numbers, and... and uh, part lists yeah. and part numbers and things like that. Any kind of contacts. And we had a backup. We had a backup on a USB drive. But I took that on vacation and believe it or not, that is lost too. It's so weird. It's almost like it's meant to be. But anyway, we're working on getting it all back. Um, the hard drive we sent off for somebody to give us an estimate on um, data recovery, which is you know, they have to have a some class something clean room and all this, it's just going to be, it's going to be expensive. I we took it in the Staples to see if they could uh, get any of the data off, but they couldn't. So now we have to take it to the next level. See, it's squealing. And uh, everything I've read about it is like, that's a head failure. So, I mean, I could take the little, the little disc out, put it on a new drive and, and try to get them in there. But it's so, it's so touchy. I mean, uh, I was talking with uh, uh, Nick, he used to work on those. Uh, Jovian and uh, he said what happens is it actually has a little wing underneath the head and the platen spins so fast it creates ground effect and lifts the the head up that's how it actually that's how it rides above the hard disk so you get one little piece of dust in there it's over you know uh, unless you have the equipment to do it you know what I mean so hopefully we'll be able to that's yeah, true Bob think about uh, let's see. So I, w I wanted to go through the. Uh, well, go ahead. You want to finish that? No, that was it. But we're working on getting that back, and we're pulling our hair out, just trying to get everything we can back to normal. So Trisha has since got upgraded her computer, which is awesome, and she's got a nice computer. So um, uh, so now it's going to either be like carbonite or something like that, or a, or a USB drive that stays there, you know, mm -hmm. which we have. So. Um, and I have one on my computer too. Lost you again. Lost my audio. Check. It's still there. Hello. It's hello. Hello. Still going. Okay, so um, these some of these show notes are a little bit old, but I thought I would go over them anyway. Uh, wanted to talk about uh, Dave RC Aviator sent us some of these prop savers. If you guys can see them in the bag there. We have not had a chance to test them out, but I wanted to show show you what they look like. And um, we've just been working really hard on open rail and just trying to get the websites running. And the flatbot kits. And the flatbot kits. But check these out. They're square. And we also hooked up another camera, so I might be able to zoom in. That looks pretty good. So he said these are really good, and all the guys really like them that have used them so far. He sent us a whole bag of them. And if you search uh, the prop savers on the on the platform, you'll find he's got them up there. He's actually selling them, so um, he, yeah, wanted he, has to, a he wanted to get some feedback. And uh, I'm sorry I haven't been able to do that yet, Dave. It's been super busy here. Um, what is this? Oh, 
um, this was a while back, but Gary in the uh, in the VIP section had posted an idea for teaching newbies how to fly, and it was a really good idea about tethering the RC plane to a central pivot, from what I understand, and so it would only go in a circle, but then they can get the feel of lift off and landing, you know what I mean? I thought that was a great idea, Gary. You should run with that. I know people have done it, but you could make up a little something just to make it easy to, to hook up at the field, you know? Uh, uh, VIX MIG-29, if you guys haven't seen it, it just keeps getting better. Check that out. <laughs> Uh, that thing looks awesome. I think he's made it by now. Uh, we broke uh, 10,000 members on the platform, mm -hmm. which is unbelievable. It's super it cool. Thank um, you, everyone. RC, Aviator, RC Aviators, uh, Dave's Where's Waldo Vacation. I did terrible at that, but I did guess two places, which was <laughs> really cool. Um, I actually kind of cheated a little bit on that one, but it's still... You know, it, it, I had to Google some stuff, but it worked because Google, Google's got this new thing called Google Image. So I put like the picture of uh, one of the pictures that he had up there. I put it in Google Image, and it, believe it or not, it brought right brought it right up. Recognize it, brought it right up. So I did the cheat on that one, but it was cool. <laughs> Uh, Flash's Olympic medals. If you haven't seen those 3D carvings that he made of the Olympic medals, they were awesome, man. Yeah, they came out good. Check those out. Uh, Strictly 3D. If you guys haven't noticed the new banner ad on the platform, he's got his site up and running. Be sure to check that out. His name's Dan. He's got a lot of cool, cool stuff and uh, really good guy, man. He works really hard and it's amazing how he was the guy when we when he got his flat printer like two weeks later, he, he had a full blown business going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just his designs and everything were already done. He's yeah. so designs, quick. Designs, packaging, everything. Really good guy, though. You want to you wanna talk to him and support him. Um, wanted to thank Urim, Tiger Pilot, for being super helpful on the platform lately. While we were away and super busy, he was just helping people like crazy. Thanks, man. That means a lot to us, as all the moderators do. But Urim really stood out, and we appreciate that, man. So we were away? while we were on vacation, I think. Or, or maybe not. No, this is probably one. Well, no, no, I, I was just leading, And he's not a moderator. Into, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Cape Cod on vacation. Um, second vacation of the year. That's like broke two records for us. But yeah. we planned the vacation back in the winter time, And um, the timing of it uh, this, this time around. We didn't think it was very good, and uh, if we hadn't already paid for it, we might have canceled it, but we would have really missed out because we had a great time. Yeah, it was super cool. We missed the whale watching, but we got to go to um, to the uh, Plymouth Plantation, which was really cool, and uh, we saw 17th century uh, village when the colonists first came over. It was awesome, man. They recreated it down every detail, and all the people that worked there... Um, they can't. They don't talk. They're in character. They can't talk to you like you know. You say, "Hey, man, you know, do those roofs leak?" They'll say, "Every once in a while, I have to get up there and patch it." So they're like in the 17th century, and after a while, it starts like rubbing off on you. The whole time you're in the village, it's like you just step back in time. It's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. They did a really good job with that. Yeah, the whole vacation was really nice. And our neighbors here are the ones who uh, own the cottage. Um, so they were really, um, they were just great. It's just a different world. It really is. It's set back in the woods and there's hammocks and it's just a nice time to just relax, man. The ocean's in the distance and it's just cool. When you go out, so the one night we, and we had my sister's kids with us, three kids, eight, 10, and 12. And the one night was like our big night. We were going out to dinner where the kids wanted to try lobster. Because you're like in lobster land there. You have to eat lobster. Even McDonald's has lobster rolls there. Yeah. So, so we're like bracing ourselves for the, for the bill for going out for a lobster dinner that night. And we get to the place to order lobster and, uh, it looks no, I, I thought, no, I didn't think so. Well, like $23 for a lobster dinner. Well, I know, but all of us ate for like $70 that night. Yeah, but still. <laughs> like, well, we all didn't get lobster, but 
when you get to the place, it's like, do you want hot dog or do you want lobster? Like, it was can, delicious, the lobster. You can have anything you want. And then you sit at a picnic table outside. It wasn't a fancy dinner at all. But the lobster rolls, uh, I didn't really dig the lobster rolls. They take, it's like they got the small lobsters and they kind of rolled them in mayonnaise and then put them on a roll. It just wasn't that good. But the, you know, the lobster you crack open, um, they gave you the whole lot. We actually got cold because they had... Um, they didn't have any two clawed lobsters, so we got two, what, one and a quarter pound uh, lobsters with one claw each. So that worked out really well. And it was just amazing that, you know, around here, if you were going out for a lobster dinner, it would be formal and you'd have to get dressed up and it would be a big thing and it would be really expensive if five sure. people went out to that dinner. And you certainly wouldn't be sitting at a picnic table, but uh, it was really There nice. it's like common. Yeah. It really is. Um, so good times. It was. It was super cool. There's so much. Uh, there's just so much going to talk about with that. We could go on and on. One of the cool things I did want to want to mention though and is so we will. <laughs> the beach. The beaches there are really unique because, you know, it's not like you just you know get out of your car and walk up to the beach and you know it's not like a gradual slope and there's the water or anything like that. It's a you walk out of your car and there's a drop. You know, it's like a 70 foot cliff and you have to find one of the stairwells to get down but uh it's crazy it's totally different they lose five feet of um of uh what, shore yeah shoreline every year pretty soon cape cod won't be there anymore yeah. i mean it's totally working its way through phone flyer 45 hello uh said that he went hey, to the yeah. fantasy of flight in polk city florida i've driven by there so many times and i have not gone the one where they have the plane sitting up in the air and the guy with the parachutes hanging off on I-95. Full scale airplanes, it's awesome. Hope you can see that sometime. Next time I go to Florida, I'm going there because my, my most of my family live in Lakeland. So I drive by that thing all the time and I've <laughs> always wanted to go. My brothers have all been, they're like, oh, you gotta go, but they never take me. It must yeah. cost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you're always working when you get it's there. It's true, it's a workcation. Uh, wanted to thank the mods for uh, holding down the fort. Um, also wanted to say, where is Bruce Iwu? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I PM'd him a bunch of times, and I call, I finally called yeah. him, and he got back to us and said, I'll call you back or something, but he never did. So, Bruce, if you're sneaking on here and listening, give us a call. <laughs> Bring him in. Um, let's see. Also wanted to personally thank Nick Jovian for the awesome job he did with, uh, Posted in the flat 3D section of the form that we created um, because we weren't here, we couldn't do that. And he just, I asked if he could help out, and he jumped on it and really did an awesome job. Yeah, and everybody that's been posting there, but he 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 got that the ball rolling there and really helped us out when we were kind of in, in a predicament there. So I wanted to thank Nick for that. It was awesome. Thank you, Nick. Uh, with the flat butt write-ups and helpful tips. And my brother Paulie, if you guys see a guy on there named Paulie on the platform and he's typing all in caps, <laughs> that is my brother. He's so happy. He got a flat printer. Uh, he, he's real creative. He does a lot of artwork and stuff. And he's been wanting a flat printer. And so we finally sent him a flat printer 3 and he is blown away. So congratulations, man. He's almost got it built. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Larry again, Flash Solutions, uh, came up with the one sheet. Tribute 3D uh, foam board, $1 foam board. You can have the Tribute 3D. It's a really cool design. Check that out on the single wing aircraft. Um, and Flash again with the flying lawnmower. That <laughs> thing is awesome, man. I know you guys have seen that. That's under unique aircraft or strange aircraft. Um, and also in the news, we were contacted by uh, SketchUp. The, now, I'm not sure if it's the Trimble or if it's still Google guys. I'm not sure because their name comes through as uh, SketchUp.com. Sketchup. So, um, and, and they want to talk to us about SketchUcam, which is awesome. I don't know what exactly they want, uh, but they're, they really said it's come a long way. They just wanted to talk to us about something. So, you know, it's open source. It, everybody owns it, so they're welcome to do what they want with it, but it's just cool that they contact us and maybe that's just their way of doing, you know, being nice and uh, cordial about it. We'll see. And we'll keep you guys posted on or what happens. Or perhaps they want to make all our financial woes go away. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. 
that you have the money to make that happen. <laughs> um, also, wanted to thank uh, Bart, um, the creator of the Ord bot, actually, uh, which is which this version is the flat bot. Uh, he actually contacted us and invited us over to the Ord camp, where the Ord bot was originally uh, conceived, and um, it's it's supposed to be really a really cool camp. I think uh, 200 people only, invitation only, and they take complete care of you. The only thing you got to do is worry about getting there. They take care of your food, your drinks, and your lodging. And uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what you have to do when you get there. I think you just hang out and talk about cool stuff and you know, people of like minds just all getting together. So we'll see how that goes. That, that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't, That's in January. Yeah, can't wait to, to meet those guys. If we're, if we're not super busy, we definitely want to go because it's yeah. an honor. And I just want to thank Mark for the, uh, keeping us in mind for that. That was really cool. And anything else? Oh. Oh, Let's this. All right? Yeah. Man, I felt like I've been talking for an hour straight. <laughs> so, I was at a yard sale the other day, <laughs> in the morning, and I came across this cool, uh, sweetie, thank you, this cool UFO lamp. So, I bought it. Thought it might be retro. I thought it looks real old. I'm turning the light out. It is really uh, I oh, think okay. it. I don't, I'm not sure if it's old or not. To be it's super sci-fi, man. I love it. It's really cool. And it's all like it's completely right. made out of metal. You gotta put it down on the table. Turn it off, man. I'm saving for the old. Oh, Can I turn this light out now? You have to unplug it. Uh, it would turn it off too. There we go. You so got it's coming the, through. Look at it. It's super cool. Go ahead. Sound effects. <laughs> Check this thing out, man. It's got these glass beads all the way around it. And it's just awesome looking. The, light, the lamp clicks to the bottom of it. Here, let's turn the thing that kind of show up. Okay. Got it. Yeah, check it out. It's like it's like a hubcap. But anyway, Trish got that and we were like, we thought that was super cool. So that's got to go yeah, upstairs. It's one of those things that you walk up and you're like, how much, you know, first off, it looked really retro. It needs to be clean. Yeah, it needs to be clean. It's only missing one of the landing gear. Okay. One, one of these little balls that screw on the bottom here. It's missing one. And it was kind of late for a yard sale. It was like, I don't know, 30 or something. A lot of people had already come and gone. I thought, Shh, how much do they want for this? You know? So I walk up and I'm like, okay, how much? He says, two dollars and fifty cents. I was like, sold. She said two dollars. <laughs> well, actually, I was getting something else. He said two, both of them for five. So I'm just kind of splitting it. But right. um, it's awesome though. <laughs> so yeah, see that every day. All right, so I wanted to, um, first of all, you guys know how when I normally show my desktop, it looks terrible because it's <laughs> just full of stuff. Well, check this out. Ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> Ta <-da. laughs> That's because I never knew this before, but you can right-click and go to View and go to Show Desktop Icons or turn them on or off right there. It's awesome. So... Uh, let me see here. What are we doing? We are trying... So I have two cameras set up. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. I have one camera set up for the... over here on the flat bot that shows... Can you pull uh, pull back on that a little bit? Um, not not with this stuff, but just this stuff here. Maybe I should, oh, maybe I should put a thing here. A block here or something. Mm, okay. There you go. It's pretty heavy. That's good, yeah. Here, we're going to set this up. Try to. Yeah, it's actually staying by itself for once. Something actually works. That's saying how the white looks there. That's pretty good. Okay, so this is the, this is the uh, prototype. That's our cat bed right there. 
But this is the prototype here that, that we actually have the, this is the MK7 extruder. And the cube extruder is, is closely related to this. But we took the whippy, the stepper motor off of it and put something, one of these 76 ounces on there. This thing will power through anything. It does a good job. And we also have a mirror for the build plate. And I just stick the power supply under here because it, it works pretty good. Slide it under here. And uh, so I also, I hooked up my filament on here, which I know a lot of you guys have already seen this, but I want to go into it. Well, I actually, in the next video, will go into it a little bit more in detail in the actual build video. This kind of giving us some focus problems. But what I wanted to show you guys is since this one's working, I figured we would go ahead and just actually try to 3D print something, but go through the the, uh, the, the work chain. So let me just set that up like that. So when you see that shot, you'll know what it is. Actually, I'll come in a little bit closer. So you'll know that that is the build plate. Um, now... <laughs> now, like I said, there are several choices on the, um, here I can move this out of the way now, there are several choices we can use on the controller or they or what they call the host, which is kind of like, you know, what, which is what CNC USB would be or what mock would be to the flat printer, it's the control software. Um, and of course there's lots of uh, CAD programs out there that you can use. There's one out there called Sculptress, and I haven't messed with it yet, but some of the guys are saying that uh, it's really cool for organic type of model. Um, excuse me. Another one out there is, uh, or another software out there that you use, is the actual, excuse me, slicing software. And you could use uh, one that's called Skyforge that will slice your models. And uh, these are the two big ones I know. And then there's one called Slicer. And uh, Slicer is really nice. And I mean, I've just gotten used to it. Now, Nick has uh, recently switched over to the Skyforge and uh, using Cura. And he's uh, he's slicing his models with Skyforge. And he's saying he's liking the, the output of the code really. Uh, it really does a nice job. So I haven't had a chance to check that out yet, but... With Repeater, which is what I like to use for my control software, um, you could pick either Skyforge or Slicer. So you can have either one slice the model, which is cool. Um, so the workflow, let me go over to the screenshot. So the workflow is basically SketchUp. And in the repeat, uh, or in the, um, let me go back over here. On the flat form, we set up a thing here uh, under the Flatbot section that talks about the 3D software that you use. And if you click on that, you'll see here, I set one in here called STL Import Export for SketchUp. And this is where you can get the little plugins that you put in. Just read that and download those, and you'll be able to put those plugins in. Uh, and that, for the, for the next part of this step here. Because uh, what I'm doing here, uh, you can see I created a, a basically half of a wine glass, and this could be anything, um, but I just made a circle, deleted the deleted the inside out of it because I'm just going to use this outside edge for the path, and then I went to the center of that circle, drew a line straight up along the blue axis, and then did a rough block of a of a glass really. To start out with. It's like this, like that. Came over, maybe put an angle here. And after you get that done, all you have to do is go through and shape it the way you want using the you know the curve tool, arc tool I mean, to kind of get the look that you're after. I'm not gonna I said I already have it, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but to show you. Uh, how, you, how I went about it anyway. 
get the Okay, so something like that. Then you could take, uh, you know, these curves and actually just hold back control and copy them over to get that middle section uh, to actually give give the rim there. Too far. We'll build it a little thicker back here. Something like that, maybe. And then have this come straight across and do this. Nick said he definitely likes repeater for his control software. Yeah. And hello, Thunderhawk. So, so that's the basic wine glass, like you see here. I just, I actually went through and made it a little bit thinner. Um. I'm going to delete this stuff since so we already have this example here. So all you you do here is use the follow me tool. You click on the face of the wine glass and then you click on the outside path. Click it. It takes a little while for it to process. That's awesome. There you go. And then let's see if it's connected. Somewhere it's not connected because I'm trying to select the whole thing and it's not let me right there see that break mm -hmm. so that's really good i'm gonna hit undo and look for that break why is it breaking right now i'm gonna close this up again hopefully that works So follow me tool to the path, wait for it to finish, by the way I got a new power supply, okay now I'm selecting the whole thing which is what we're after. On your computer? Yep, on my computer so I'm getting uh, no more of the you know, whining sound every time it tries to run, and I'm even running two cameras which is amazing, and eventually I'm going to be running the printer on top of that, so we'll see. 566. So you can see uh, here it actually went ahead and smoothed it. I didn't even ask it to. I don't know why it did that, but if you select it, you should be able to right click on it and soften it along the edges. But for some reason, when I drug that over, it did it automatically. And that's kind of what we're after, except I would like to fill that hole in. That looks really good. Now we can take our, I would hide these, maybe make this a component. We can take this and go to export as STL. You'll see it gives you the option of binary or ASCII, which is nice. I, I usually do the binary one in millimeters. And just save that wherever. Let's see, I'm going to put it underneath my um, STL models, flat dot examples. I already have, oops, I already have one there, so I'll, put, I'll call this one two. Now there's no progress bar or anything like that. You just have to wait. You can kind of tell when it's done. I mean, it's pretty quick. Uh, it's actually already done because I'm able to select these tools. So now I can go over and open up Repeater, and this is what Repeater looks like. And you'll see you have the ability to, to rotate, zoom in. If you click the middle mouse wheel, you can pan. Uh, down here we have the console that tells you what's going on. Um, let's see. There's three, there's, I think there's, yeah, three major windows, or actually there's four. Um, you got your object placement, and this is where you're going to place your STL file. So I'm going to hit Add Object, and we'll look for that glass 2. Click Open. Why is there two of them? I don't know. But there was only supposed to be one. This one on the left. 
because the one on the right, let's see, has a problem. Okay, this is a good thing to show you though. See how this is kind of pulsating? That means you're 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 outside the boundary of the actual printing area. So you can if I drag this out here, you can go to center object, it'll put it right in the center, you can drop it. Let me let me remove these, but this is where it lists them. I'm going to hit remove and I'm going to hit add and I'm going to go back and add the, uh, the first one. For some reason it got both of those. Okay, so there's the first one that we did. And you can go center, drop. If I wanted to, I could copy them. It'll bring up this window here. Uh, you can make whatever, however many copies will fit. That's too many. I want to delete some of them. Let's try to center each one. Select them all and then do auto position. Oh. Okay. They should be able to fit. I just have, I think I just have too many here. There we go. So it automatically will nest. So you can imagine if you had like 20 different little parts that you're printing for some kind of brackets or something. That's a nice feature. All right, so um, I know it's probably laggy right now, but once it once the recorded one's done, it'll look a lot better. All right, so let's go and um, raise this up a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'm not actually going to print all four of those, so let's just remove these. We're using this as an example of center. Make sure it's drop objects just drops it down on the flat plane. Which I don't even think you can lift it straight up. I haven't been able to. Maybe using one of these uh, move objects. You can move it like this, but it seems to be locked. So, anyway, I usually hit just force a habit center and drop just to make sure it's on the. Yeah, click here to go back to rotate. All right, so once you're in here and you got your object the way you want it, um, Slicer actually uh, by itself. Let me go back. Let me go over here. Slicer is just a little program that sits inside of its own folder. Now, Repeater calls on Slicer. If you put this active up here, Slicer three. I'm sorry, uh, Slicer. It will. Uh, it will use the slicer settings that you have set up. If you hit Skyforge, it'll slice it with Skyforge. But I have the um, slicer uh, three, sorry, the slicer uh, program set up for it. And if you go to configure, like I said, slicer is a completely separate program, and this is what it looks like by itself. So, if the, so if repeater wasn't here um, when you opened up slicer. This is what you would see. Slicer has its own little place here that you can drag and drop objects into. Um, I don't know if you can open an object. You can, no, you gotta drag them in there. But, um, but you can, it's got its own palette, so you could move things around in here. It even has, you know, rotate, but so does repeater. It's, it's basically the same thing as setting up the palette on repeater, but you can do it here ahead of time if you wanted to, which I don't ever do that. What I've done is um, you got print settings, filament settings, and then printer settings. And each one of those have uh, a list of different uh, settings that you have to fill in to get started. Now, it has a wizard that you can go through, and it'll ask you, you know, uh, do you want it, you know, what size is your filament? How do you want to set up your cooling? Which I actually have to go back and retweak the cooling because I can already see from my prints it's not working like I want. So, uh, let's see here. Got your infill, how fast you want it to go, skirt and brim. Brim is like a, uh, the skirt is a kind of, it'll put uh, a line around the outside to kind of prime the nozzle. So it'll do a perimeter. It'll go, it'll go whatever you put it. I got it set up here to go two loops around the object and four millimeters away, it's going to extrude plastic on the ground around the outside of it like a fence. And all that does is you'll see at the beginning that nothing will come out of the nozzle, then eventually it'll start coming out. 
what that's doing is priming the nozzle, getting all the air out, and getting a good flow of plastic before it actually goes to the inside and starts working on the on the actual print. Now, brim is like a cowboy hat. If you have an object that's real long and real flat, you're going to want to put brim on there so it won't uh, peel up or curl up once it starts cooling. Thanks, babe. You're welcome. But, uh, so you'll turn that on and off. I mean, you'll, you'll be in and out of here a lot working on different things. And you can save, <clears throat> right now it's a little confusing. Um, you can save different configurations for print setting. You can save here. You can save filament settings. That's a separate one. You can see I numbered mine one, two, and three. Uh, and and uh, so each three, each one of these tabs, all the settings in each one of these tabs, uh, you can save separately, which is nice because if you let's say you just want to switch your filament size, well you could just go over here and change one thing uh, under your filament settings. And you don't have to change your whole thing. It's nice, but it's also confusing because you can also go up here and you can export the entire configuration bundled into one package. Um, you'll notice these three tabs correspond with repeater, these three tabs here. You got one, two, and three. So these are the three different configurations that, that I've saved. Uh, that, or I'm sorry, that it, yeah, I've saved them, but it's going to call on these three configurations when it goes to slice this uh, model. I'm not exactly sure how long this model is going to take to slice either. Let me go back into uh, into uh, manual, not manual control, object placement, and I'm going to scale this down half, and maybe it'll slice quicker. Maybe not half. Let's do point seven, and we'll center it, drop it, and now it's going to be smaller. Of course, it's so small, it'll probably never print that stem with the settings I have right now. My settings do not. Uh, I don't have a fan. So this stem would come out really hot because the tip is concentrated in this area over and over again. Um, so you could imagine if the, the, you know, the tip sitting here, uh, it just basically would melt the plastic and make a blob instead of, a, instead of what it should look like. So in Slicer, there are settings to slow down your, your uh, nozzle when you're printing in one area over and over again to kind of let the plastic cool before it comes back around and, lay, and puts another layer of hot plastic on there. But uh, that, it kind of helps, but it kind of doesn't too because the tip is still concentrated in that little circle area. So you're better off uh, eventually putting a cooling fan, especially with PLA, which is what we're using, putting a cooling fan on your extruder. Uh, you would basically set it up so that right here, you can see I have a little cooling fan right here. Um, now you can tie this into some of the spare pins and actually control it with the G-code. Um, it can be controlled, uh, pulse width modulated, or it can just be turned on and off. You can set the different percentages, but this, this particular fan, it stays on all the time when the machine is running because this is actually cooling the uh, gear head inside of, inside of here so that the filament doesn't melt because the stepper motor gets hot. But you can have a separate fan hooked, I'm sorry, hooked onto the front here, kind of angled down, or you can print yourself a, a shroud that will direct the airflow right across, not hitting, trying not to hit the tip, but to hit the plastic right below the tip. Because the idea is that the cool plastic comes in, uh, it gets pulled through with the gear. As long as it's cool, that gear will pull it through. If it starts warming up up in here, the gear will start slipping on it. Um, down here, it heats it up and, of course, come, extrudes it out of the tip. And then as soon as it comes out of that tip, what you would really want to do is make that cool down again instantly so it stays exactly where you put it. Unfortunately, that's hard to do. That's a, that's a hard thing to accomplish. Um, but with, with a lot of tweaking, you can make it, you can make it happen. And uh, people have. I've done it on some of the past machines I've built, and I definitely have to do it on this one because I've, I've really kind of exhausted the settings for cooling and can't really get it to, uh, to do what I want. Let me get back over here. Uh, okay, so let's get back over here. I should have, should have started this. I'm going to go back to the thing.
the slicer setting, and I'm going to go ahead and hit slice with slicer 3, and you'll see it pulls up a little window, and it's telling you it's slicing the file. And while it's doing doing that, I'm going to go over to manual control, let's move this out of the way, and I'm going to plug in the machine, and I'm going to hit my reset button on the Arduino, but for some reason, I always have to do that. Oh, it's already done slicing. So, when it, when it finishes slicing, it automatically jumps over to this next window, the decode editor, and you can see all the code. And you can also go to visual, visualization and actually uh, slice it down, I think. Yeah. Let me zoom out a little bit here. You can show single layers, which is what I'm doing here. And you'll see how it's going to try to uh, rebuild up. There's a way to show the layer ring through. There we go. That's that's what it's going to attempt to do. That's cool. Yeah, super cool program, man. It just does. It goes above and beyond what you need. It just does everything. Okay, so you see this little blue line around the outside edge? Uh, this is that skirt we were talking about. It draws two perimeter lines. You can set it set it to one or whatever. And I got it set for, I think, four millimeters away from the object. So no matter what shape this object was, it would encompass it. Uh, not necessarily with a circle, but if it was a square, it would encompass it with a square. It does its best to try to just do an outside perimeter and match the perimeter of the object that's already there. Are you using PLA? I am. I am using PLA with this, which is pretty hard to do with this MK7 extruder. Now our cubed extruders, uh, we shouldn't have a problem with it. Now let me go over to the last window, which is the manual control. This is where you do all your jogging and everything. We're going to go ahead and hit connect. And when you hit connect, you'll see that everything lights up and becomes active, basically. Um, we should be able to, if everything works, uh, jog the machine, which we can. And if I click this fan button, it will turn on our little, uh, our little fan here. And you'll notice that uh, we can slide that slider, and the fan will go. You know, you want that. You want that on 100%. I don't know if you can see if it's on or not, but it is. And then, uh, I should have done this a long time ago because it takes a little while, but I don't have the thick cables that you guys are going to have. I need to go back through and hook them up, but I didn't hook up my hotbed with the thick cables, um, which I wish I would have done. But anyway, if you go over here and you click on heat extruder and heat crit bed, you'll see it'll start to heat up. Now I have my default temperature set to 180 and my, uh, for the extruder and, uh, the hot end and one and 65 for the, the uh, heated bed and all these perimeters here when you there's no real way to save these inside of repeater it just does it automatically um, if you go to printer settings you'll see um, I have a, a file up here that's called test and then the next one is default this test one here, the way this works is you just type in whatever you want up here as your as your configuration name. And whatever changes you made to to this, when you hit apply or OK, either one, it will automatically save it. So um, you'll see here, COM4, uh, what's that, 25, uh, I'm sorry, 256,000, stop bits one, and all this stuff we can, we can post. Travel feed rate 300. There was something I wanted to show you. Oh, you'll see it has a go to park position after job kill. So you could have this go over to. There's one really cool thing about this. There's like a dump area. So you can have it go over and actually stay over top of like a little bucket or something. So the plastic will extrude out into the bucket or, you know, the excess, excess plastic. There's park positions. Um, you can just, you want to leave this on. Disable. 
extruder after uh, job kill and disable heat at bed after job kill because, and also I have disable motors after job kill, but that one's not necessary. But you definitely want these to uh, turn off anytime you hit an emergency stop or uh, or that or the code runs into something or the machine runs into something that uh, it doesn't understand. It's going to do a kill command, and when that happens. You know, you're not going to be sitting there usually watching it because it takes hours. So when that happens, you really want to um, have those turn off automatically. You set up your print uh, width and height. Uh, if you have a dump area, you would check this. Uh, it would go over to there to dump the excess plastic. And one of the cool things is you can do a post slice filter. So like every slice, you could set up a filter that would uh, go over maybe and wipe the nozzle against a sponge and then go back, you know. And you can run that filter after every slice, which is cool. I think that's what that's for. I haven't actually tried that, but that's what I pictured it doing. Uh, the same, I guess the dump area would be the same as that. Um, this might actually be something else. Let's see. Post slice filter. Uh, after each slicing action. I'm sorry, that's not what this is. It is run on the G code, it says, produced by Slicer. So you can um, you can basically have it do something. You could actually have it go over and wipe the, the nozzle off of every, um, every slice if you wanted to. So that's kind of cool. Um, so anyway, once, once you hit OK here, all that stuff is saved. Uh, repeater sets up a work directory. If you show the work directory, you'll see it goes under your your uh, C drive repeater work directory, and you got it, it saves a uh, composition STL and a composition G code, and then the slicer .ini file. And the slicer .ini file is really all three of these perimeters that we were looking at before, um, just combined into one giant text file. All the settings. Um, so it reads that, so it knows how to actually uh, slice the, you know, it knows the perimeters that it needs. And the composition G code and STL, that is just like a temporary uh, directory that it saves the STL file to as it's working on it under object placements. And I believe under slicer as well. Probably more so under slicer. Um, so right now, if you look, I'm not sure if this is going to show up on the camera, but. I'm going to lower this a little bit here. This is just constantly sending the commands. But you can debug and troubleshoot with this. But if you look, it's got the temperature at 184. So it's going a little bit above where it is. And then it's got the temperature over here at 60. And uh, it's 61 right now. So it's always trying to reach that temperature. If you click on this tab up here, there's actually a temperature curve. And you can see the moment I started that, it started you know, throwing the amps into that into that board, and, uh, or sorry, into that uh, heater cartridge. And you can see the sine wave here. And this is basically the software turning the board on and off to try to maintain where this purple line is. The purple line is the line that we're saying, this is our target temperature. The red line is trying to achieve, achieve that target temperature. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to create an average, and it's going to work. And, until it finally figures out, okay, this is where I need to be, and it starts. It'll actually pulse. Uh, it'll actually pulse voltage to it, so that it finally gets it. And later on, you'll see it'll be a lot smoother than it is now. And over here is the same thing with the heated bed. You can see the target temperatures in the uh, the darker blue here, at, which is 65, and the the temperature as from when we started it, and now that one's real. It's such a big surface, once it reaches that temperature, it kind of stays right there. So that works really well. You'll see this. Once you add um, a fan to the front tip of the extruder when you're trying to cool your parts, you're going to have to work with this and tweak this even more. Uh, and also, um, just there's some things you can do in the firmware so it'll set it a little bit uh, quicker. It won't let it bounce so far down, you know. Uh, let me go back down and up there. And when we go to actually start the code to start to run this file, um, and this is the this is the G code we're going to try to run. When we go to run this, you'll see that it'll um, it waits until it reaches 
this target temperature for, I have it set for five seconds. Uh, the default is 10 seconds, but it'll wait for five seconds and it maintains within three degrees high or low of this target extruder temperature. It will start the, um, it'll start it, but I got tired of waiting, so I set that for five, and, and so it still takes a little while, but it, it works fine. Um, so let's see, I'm going to see if I can go ahead and jog these home sometimes. It gives me a problem, but we'll see. Actually, before I do that, let me, um, let me lower the Z, if it'll let me. I, this is the only thing about this program. I notice if you sit too long while you're waiting, it will um, it'll lock up on you. Well, that, that was working. Let me just hit home. And see if I can get it to uh, that way. And I, I actually finished uh, earlier tonight. I finished one of these wine glasses. I need to put the oil on there. And so the the Z axis is as high as it can possibly get, really. And I just have some silicone spray that I put. I spray it on the nut blocks. Just help helps break it in a little bit. I never hardly ever go that high. So. Okay, so you get to I'm guessing you can see, sorry. The tip here is just touching the glass. And we have the limit switch set up somewhere. Well it's hard to see, but it's under there. And that stops it right where we want it. So everything is uh, up to temperature, but I like to bring the Z up and maybe you'll be able to see this in the mirror part or not, I'm not sure, but bring that Z up a little bit and prime the, the nozzle even, even a little bit more before we start. So go over and hit uh, extrude. And I'll take and uh, push down on my uh, filament a little bit just to make sure it starts. And it's going in there. You should see it start to come out. It's coming out right now, actually. Yep. A couple of holes you're going to want to hack, too. I've got one of these scrapers, and that works really good like a putty knife. And also, i got one of these. It works good to get out. Get some of the stuff off the tip because that tip gets so hot. And you'll never get it perfectly clean. Maybe we'll come up with a really cool dump. We can set up a little dump uh, tray on here that'd be cool. It just wipes it off right before it does the print. It's like a pet peeve. You gotta get it clean. You know? And as you're going down, it keeps flopping out. <laughs> so yeah, it's a game. All right, so now uh, we're set there. So we'll go ahead and hit the uh, run job. And as soon as you hit run job, you look up here, it says printing job, ETA one hour, 38 minutes, 26 seconds. Uh, I haven't really done any uh, timing to see. I haven't used this latest version. It, the Some of the past versions were real bad at keeping the accurate time for this, but uh, uh, Nick was telling me that it's doing a lot better now. I haven't had a chance to test that, but let's see. So down here, we should see some uh, commands if I have it set up right. That's telling it to, um, it's telling it that it's waiting. Let's see if it sends a command. Now here it says connect it. it extruder is at 178 degrees, so we now have to lower a little bit. It's at 177 now, 176, 175. Now if it can hold this for five seconds within three degrees, it'll and it just went past it. So every time it, it dips below that, it's going to start the count over. So it'll start over at five, four, three, two, one. This one does not show that. I don't know why, but pro interface or some people call it pronterface. Uh, and also, um, YAR will both uh, show you the actual code 
and it will show you the wait time counting down. I'm not sure why this one doesn't. I thought it was maybe some of the some of these that I didn't have set, but I do have them set. I clear this. So it's just a waiting game right now because right now we are waiting for this temperature curve to kind of equal out this top one. So they're good. And you can see it's drawing this red line. And that one, if it gets there, sometimes this, uh, this OpenGL messes up too. But you can see it going over. This is new. It going real slow here is kind of new too. So it's priming the nozzle right now. It's going to do two rotations of this. And then it's going to go to the inside and start our base layer for the wine glass. For our baby wine glass. Mm -hmm. And in the settings, we have it set up. I'm not sure if you can even see that. Okay, so in the settings, we have it set up to do one, uh, uh, sorry, three fill layers to complete a solid surface. So it's going to do, it's going to do one this way. It's going to do one, and look, you can see it's already messing up a little bit right there. So let's just let me see what my temperature is. So my temperature probably dropped too much on the tip, and now it went back up, and now it's extruding again. If my temperature drops to 165, that's what happens. You get a line there where it just stops extruding. And you can see it, it's almost like a banding, because it'll do it again here in a second, where the, you'll see the temperature will drop as it's trying to go up and down and reach it. Right now it's at 180, so it's not going to do it. But already, when that goes past 175, what happens is, as a matter of fact, I'm going to turn that to 180 and just have it set up for 180, so I don't have to think about that. Because it's always trying to reach that 180, and it, if it goes over, it's fine. But if it goes below it, it'll stop extruding. So in the software, I just change that to 180, so hopefully it'll just stay at 180. It's doing pretty good there. And that little bit, uh, that does not matter. And sometimes you can just take your, your hand and push down on it if you need to. Uh, hopefully we don't need to. It's only on these solid fills that you really run into an issue. Let's see where it's dropped to because it just stopped. Now it's already down to 170, so it's and it's going up. So I got to get my, I have to get that temperature range fixed in the firmware because it's allowing it to drop so much that it's actually stopping the extruder. So that's just a part of the experiment, you know. And it's going to be completely different when we all get the new extruders. Um, from what I understand, since we have the ability to adjust the tension, you can't adjust the tension on this extruder, and that's one of the problems with it. So this is the number three, the last solid layer. And after this, I think my infill setting is set for 25% uh, density. Um, so we'll see how that looks in a minute. Let's see, I think it stopped again. Yep, went down to 168. So my temperature range is all over the place. Now we gotta fix that. Hopefully it'll come back up. Oop, there it goes. It's up to 170. As soon as it hits the 170 mark, it just starts working again. And that's like the magic number for this. Yep. And then, uh, you know, I just realized something. 
you guys know I said it, it would be three solid layers and then it would go to the infill. And, and that's, that's what it does. However, this wine glass base is so thin um, that it's already going to the three layers on, to make up the top surface as well. Um, so that's what's happening there. It, you know, whenever it does a solid surface, whether it's a top or a bottom, it does uh, three solid layers. So that's what we're seeing here. So that's my bad. It's just not thick enough to do any infills. Um, but you will see it when it gets to the stem part. It should be in a minute here. And that's looking pretty good. It's hard to see it, I know. Let me switch over to the um, screen for a second. While that's doing that. So you can see here, um, Repeater does a live view of the areas that are hot. It's calculating, you know, these areas are still hot, but of course the whole part is still hot because we're on a heated bed. But that's kind of cool how it works like that. It just shows you, and it, it's a little bit ahead, so you can actually see what the next move is going to be. Let's see here. So even though this is showing on the screen, it's almost done. What actually, millimeter per minute are you running? Three. Uh, I'm sorry. A uh, hundred. Okay, so now it's doing the uh, the retracts are set for three. Uh, the retracts are set for 200, and the jog is set for, uh, I'm sorry, not the retracts. The travels are set for 200, and the jog is set for 300. Okay, so now it's doing the inside base. And, of course, that wine glass tapers, so it's going to be a slow taper all the way up. And you guys uh, just aren't seeing any of the infills, and that's kind of what I wanted to show you, but you will see it eventually. Well, just experimenting with this program, you can see it. You can do dry runs with this program, too. If you don't have your extruder yet, this button down here in the bottom right corner, you can do a dry run and kind of see what it would look like. Okay, there's an infill there. So that's 25% uh, density. And if we switch over to the camera view of that, you can see sort of what that looks like. That's exactly what you would expect. So this part doesn't, it's, you know, it's not going to require any real uh, hardcore uh, handling, so it doesn't need a real big infill, and the infills take a long time. So. Sounds good, TH. Have a good night. Um, so that's pretty good, actually. I think we pretty much covered most of the bases. And as we get into it more, uh, there will we'll, be a lot more tutorials and stuff to follow. But we kind of wanted to just show you guys, you know, what it what it looks like when it's printing, and and kind of just really go through the workflow that we use for it. So that's pretty much it. Um, I, box thanks, dude. <laughs> uh, so this is the actual finished uh, glass. This is what that exact model looks like once it's done. You can even see the little polygons in there and stuff. It's awesome. This one does not hold water because down at the base right here where it came together, you can see it got real hot right here to do this stem. So uh, when it got up into here, it just left holes because it just blobbed basically and melted through there. The top part here looks great, and the base looks pretty good. But it, when it started getting to the stem, it, but still the stem's rock hard. Did a good job. It barely leaked, really. I mean, it was just drip, drip, drip. Yeah, and you're not gonna get drunk drinking out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. So that's the basic layout of it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully it'll help.
and we'll go through, like I said, and there'll be more tutorials and stuff. I mean, this is just PLA, and and it's blue PLA. There's there's like you have to go through and just we need to put together another spreadsheet of like all the different companies that sell PLA and how how good it um, works at what speeds and you know some of this PLA every once in a while. Uh, PLA collects moisture, so it comes with a silicon pack. And every once in a while, you hear air bu or water bubbles popping in there because it, it, it uh, actually got moisture in it with this particular um, company's. And I actually like this one, even though it has that water bubbles in it, it still does a real good job. And I've printed several things with it. Um, th this was a horrible print, but you can see this is a uh, universal joint, which is pretty cool. It's actually a double universal joint. So, there's just so many things you can do with these. And it's just the beginning of it. I know uh, Tiger Pilot, I was telling him I wanted to build the Mars rover. And he's like, here we go again. <laughs> but this is actually what I was building. <laughs> this little guy. And of course, he's super glued together. Now this one, you know, when you look up close to it, it came out terrible. But it's just a bad print. It's me experimenting with the uh, settings. But it's still cool looking. It looked real cool on camera. <laughs> and um, just a million things you can do. And Thingiverse has all kinds of stuff. But the real, the real fun is when you go into SketchUp and you start coming up with your own designs. And you know you go through and and actually produce something that you made. Instead of just downloading an STL file, you know, it's just really cool to be able to make your own brackets and stuff, and you know, whatever you can think of. Really, uh, it's awesome. So once again, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thanks for joining us and hanging out with us in the Flat Lab. Mark and Trish Carew here. We're gonna say good night and God bless, and we will see you on the platform. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're watching the recording, thanks for watching the recording. Hope it was helpful. Thanks, everybody. Good, good night. night. Hey, Will do, George. Can you play the, uh, what? Can you play funny video? Oh. Can you or no? Yeah, I can. Uh, I have to find it. Um, hold on, let me stop this real quick. Should I record it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on one second, guys. Um, Trish came uh, across these funny videos that she wants to share. Just the one. And hopefully... Because uh, it could go on and on, but it is really funny. Let's see. Yeah. And then it's down. It's uh, beyond this. It's down there now. I'm sure of it. Hold on one second. I'm make sure I'll plug this. It will just stay there hot. Just one second, guys. Oh, hold on. All right. So this is called if what it's what's it called? If kids, um, if our children wrote if, if movies. movies were written by our children and. These, these guys got together and they they got some kids to tell a story, come up with a story. Well, should we tell them the whole thing? Or? Yeah, okay. and, and uh, I, I guess they're the dads, I would think. Yeah. Uh, and dads they, and they got them to um, look at, let's see, this is still soft. Pulled it off the thing there. But anyway, um, they they told the kids to tell a story or something. I don't know how they got them to do it, but and then they go through and they must edit this like crazy, but they go through and they the kids are talking. You don't see the kids, but the the uh, the parents are actually acting it out. So the voices are just it's, yeah. The voices over. are the kids' voices. It's hilarious so though. Funny. The story does. It's just a kid story, and it's you just gotta see it anyway. They have a whole bunch of these. Listen to the details. Details. Oh. Is it on the screen? What? Is it over there? Not yet. Okay, let's see if this works. Ding dong. Well, you um, I need to sell a penguin. Do you want him? A real penguin or a pet penguin? 
A pet penguin. Okay. A real pet penguin. I'll have it. You sure? Yep. Or do you want him plus another guy? I want him less. You sure? I want a bird. A bird? Oh, sorry, but we sold our bird already. To who? Do you have a black coat? No. He had a pink coat. Then I know who he is. Who is he? Hey, he's my next door neighbor. He's gone. I checked in the house. I knocked on the doorbell and rang it, but he was gone. I know. So, oh, did he pay so much money? No. Because if he has he so much money, then he's a bank robber. Well, I saw one dollar on the ground. A ten dollar bill. Then he's a bank robber. I mean, I mean, a thousand dollar bill. Then he's a bank robber. Quick footprints. Yeah. The footprints stop right here. Yeah. And there's a wall and they go right through. Yeah. I don't know how. I wonder if there's a password. Well, let's try a password. Hello? Hello? Nope. Nope. So do you want the, um, do you want the penguin? Yep. Okay. You better work harder. You better or else you're fired. Now go work. <clears throat> So anyway, it's it, it's really funny, you guys. Uh, we'll put the link in there for you guys yeah. because they have a whole bunch of them, and some of them are just off the wall funny, man. You just can't believe how how uh, the stories these kids come up with. It's crazy, man. And their the parents' voices are so on time. I know. I don't know how they do it, to be honest. Oh, they're really funny. The whole series. It really is. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great night, and we will talk to you soon. Good night, guys. Good night, everyone. Access denied. Server admin status revoked. Your connection to the server has been terminated. See you soon. Go to sleep now.